Would you please pray with me? O oh, loving and kind God, thank you for the gift of your word for us this day and for the words that you place on each of our hearts. And, oh, dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy, holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have to tell you that every time that I read this story or engage this text for preaching, it takes me back several years ago to when our five children were young. They were all born within nine years of each other. And just for a point of reference, our youngest are twins, Malcolm and Henry, whom some of you have gotten to know since our family has been here at First Church. And they are now 16 years old. Anyhow, those years when our kids were young remain a bit of a blur to Shane and me. But what I do remember well is that multitasking and the simultaneous conversations and the constant interruptions that characterized those days while we were changing diapers and taking them to the story time and to preschool and the playground, all the while still somehow doing volunteer work at church. I'm not sure how we managed to do that during those days. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not complaining. Those years bring back tender and fond memories for me. Life was good, but it truly was one blessed interruption after another during those days. As you may have guessed, all that personal background comes with my reading of our text from Matthew today. Now, while it may be a story that is familiar to you, it is a bit hard to follow, isn't it? I mean, the gospel writer of Matthew seems to be jumping all over the place. Our appointed reading this morning is from the ninth chapter of Matthew, where we first learn of Jesus' interaction with Matthew the tax collector, who was certainly disliked and distrusted by the common folk and for good reason. Tax collectors, as you may recall, at that time were known to be unethical and greedy, and they were known to take advantage of the poor and peasant people for their own financial gain. And yet, it turns out that Matthew is one of the twelve who Jesus called to be a disciple. How could that be? And then, if that is not confusing enough, our lection then skips a few verses and jumps to verse 18, where we encounter someone who is referred to as a leader from the temple, who summons Jesus to go with him to his home to bring his young daughter back to life. And so, of course, Jesus agrees, but on the way to the leader's house, Jesus was then approached by a woman who, Scripture tells us, had been suffering from a flow of blood for 12 years. And then, in that very moment, the woman reached out and she touched the fringe of Jesus' cloak. And we read that she was instantly made well through her faith. But that's still not the end of this story. Jesus continues along his way to the leader's house. And upon entering it, Jesus immediately pronounces that the leader's daughter is not dead, but is merely sleeping. Jesus then went to the girl, 
took her by the hand, and instantly she got up. Here, in this text today, we have two back-to-back -back miracles in one story. And you may all agree that this story is a bit challenging to follow, although it likely does reflect a day in the life of Jesus, who was not just a miracle worker, but apparently, like caregivers of young children, Jesus was the ultimate multitasker of all. The needs for healing and health and wholeness, especially among the peasant people in those days, were numerous and disproportionate and overwhelming at that time. There is something else that captured my attention within our reading for this morning. And that is that the gospel writer used the word fringe. He used the word fringe as in the woman reached out and touched the fringe, or hem, of Jesus' cloak. Now, what we know about this woman from Matthew's account is that she had a medical condition which had been causing her to bleed continuously for 12 years. We also know that the law at that time would have declared her to be ceremonially unclean due to her bleeding condition. This means that she wouldn't have been permitted to enter the temple for religious ceremonies. And according to the law, anyone or anything that she touched would have become unclean as well. So here this woman was, an outcast for reasons beyond her control, she was someone who had been socially displaced to the fringes of society. But after 12 long years of suffering, she was desperate and in need of a miracle. And through the gift of her faith, she trusted that Jesus would be able to heal her. And as soon as the woman reached out and touched the fringe of Jesus' cloak, her bleeding stopped, and she was finally healed. Through the boldness of faith of this unnamed woman, a direct connection is made between the fringe of Jesus' cloak and the outcasts who have been displaced to the fringes of society. While I have been recently reflecting on this gospel theme of Jesus ministering at the fringes of society, I also had the privilege of co-leading our annual Youth Mission Week this past week with Melissa Colwicky here at First Church. And our theme this year was Justice Begins at Home. Throughout this past week of experiential learning and conversation and some really good questions and ideas from our youth, we all had the opportunity to reconnect with our historical and historic roots as a congregation within the social gospel movement. And we also found inspiration through our current commitment to social justice and community service and advocacy today. Several of our First Church members and friends spent time with our young people this past week, 
to inspire them and engage them in the work that we do together as a congregation. And as we respond to the needs of those who are indeed living on the fringes of society. Here, throughout our wider community, and even just outside our doors at church, literally. And then, toward the end of the week, we were also able to move out into the wider community for additional opportunities to learn and grow and serve in faith. Our Youth Mission Week this past week was certainly a time of building and rebuilding relationships among the youth and with the adults as well. It was an intentional time of connecting and reconnecting following a time of disruption brought about by COVID and significant changes and transitions within our congregation. And it was a time of restoring community. Our gospel reading for today takes us all the way to the fringes or to the borders of our own hearts to understand that it is through the presence of Jesus in our lives that we are able to find healing and hope and wholeness and restoration and love as we seek to restore our relationships with all people and all living things. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>